Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher. I am here for my long promised <laughs> first quilt video. I am in front of a cabinet that is an antique. It was made in the 1880s. It was originally in Colorado and my father-in-law brought it to Jacksonville when they moved here. And after he passed, I have it. It's actually a china cabinet and it's solid oak and even has the original glass on the doors and normally it's closed and I'm in my foyer my front door is right here so um, I'm kind of trapped so if I need to get out I'll have to call 911 anyway I'm glad to be back finally here for my first quilt video I'm going to talk briefly about my quilt history and my quilt journey and then I will talk a little bit about some of the projects I am currently working on so um, glad you're here I don't know how often I'll do this I'm not gonna make any promises to schedule but this is the first one and this one is kind of going to be mostly about scrap quilts which have always been my favorites and are still ones that I tend to work on more than anything else they're scrap quilts so let me start with the fact that as a child I grew up with lots and lots of quilts around and actually started piecing some quilts when I was five years old my mom had a knee pedal on her uh, sewing machine. My feet couldn't touch the floor, still can't. <laughs> but I was able to, with the knee pedal, that I could actually use the sewing machine. And she taught me how to use the sewing machine. I sewed patches together. This has been in a trunk, so it doesn't smell all that great. But anyway, my grandmother uh, put them together in the rows and tied this quilt and many of these things are from clothes. When I was a child, we would take old clothes we had grown out of that were worn out and we would take the buttons off and the zippers out and then my grandmother would take whatever usable fabric there was and cut patches for quilts. So I think she gave me a stack of patches and I started piecing them when I was very, very young. My mom was not a quilter. Um, hold on, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put these things. Here's the, the mysterious hand. <laughs> uh, my mom was not a quilter. She was a knitter and a garment sewer. Um, I, I tried to knit when I was really young, took a class. It never really caught on with me. Um, I just didn't. This is another one my grandmother made. One of the few two color quilts that she made. This, um, I believe she made the top and I ended up tying it because at some point, I think I got this and it was just the top or she had basted it or something. I can't remember, but I ended up finishing the tying. I don't remember the name of this block, um, twist and turn or something like that. Um, it's really very easy. It's a four patch. Oops, I gotta figure out which way I'm going. A half square triangle. And then, let's see, go this way. Half, another, another half square triangle. Another four patch. And then the next row are solid. A solid green, and then a solid white. So the pattern shows up, but the actual blocks within it are really pretty easy. So my grandmother made that one. I ended up tying it. Then my grandmother made all of us, when we graduated high school, we got a um, quilt that she had hand quilted. Many of the quilts that she made were wool, uh, patchwork. She would take wool jackets, wool coats, and they were just very utilitarian. She would tie them with uh, pearl cotton. And they were, some people call those a comforter. I still call them a quilt, but, um, this is an example of the one she made me when I graduated high school. This is grandmother's flower garden. Uh, a lot of her fabrics were similar to feed sacks or what we call 30s reproduction. That same green is in between the grandmother. This was paper pieced, English paper piecing. It's not in very good shape. A lot of these things are pretty old. I mean, I'm, I'm old and the quilts are, even, you know, the fabric in the quilts was even older than me, I'm sure. So anyway, um, so that kind of started my quilt journey. Um, at some point in time, I decided I wanted to make my first quilt. And so I took a class at a 
I was going to see if I brought something else. I didn't. That's okay. At a local quilt shop, when I lived in Kansas City, after I had graduated college, I was working um, in my career. And some of the times when I was in high school, I wasn't interested in quilting. I really only wanted to make garments. And at some point in time in my junior high, high school, I really got into tailoring, making clothes for myself. And at one point in time, when I went away to college, I graduated in textiles and clothing merchandising. I really wanted to be a professional seamstress, a dress designer slash seamstress. That was my goal. That would have been a very competitive life. So I'm glad that I chose to go into the retail end of things anyway. So when I was working, I decided to make my very first quilt. I took a class. This is a sampler quilt, and we will insert some pictures because it's hard to show the whole thing. I made this in 1981, so it's over 40 years old. I was not aware of the fact that quilts would fade, and I had this next to a east or west window in my house in Kansas City and I had a lot of fading so this is it's it's not as good a shape as it obviously was years ago but I made it when I was single put my maiden name Johnson County Kansas 1981 was when I finished it took me probably nine months I think the class was a 12-week class so we went once a week and we learned to do a lot of different things we learned to do bias binding on this one here. We learned to do um, applique, Dresden. We learned to do, there's another one here somewhere, uh, Y seams on this star. We learned to do paper piecing on this one and somewhere in here we also learned to do applique and curved piecing so it was a comprehensive class and at the end then we learned how to do all the piecing was done by hand and then we learned how to hand quilt and how to bind so it was quite a while after the class was finished that i finished my first quilt but um i'm very thankful that i finished it before my mom passed away because she actually got to see it and i was very very proud of my first quilt so my next quilt I made was for my daughter when she was born. By that time, I was also into a lot of cross stitch. Um, these are prairie schooler animals from one of their charts. She was born in 86, so you can see it's very dated, especially with the lace, eyelet lace around the edge. But there's no holes in it, so it's still in good shape. I stitched these on Ada and then incorporated them. The theme of her room was Noah's Ark. So, obviously, I changed the colors of the animals. So, that was one of the next quilts I made. Sometime after that, we moved to uh, Florida from Kansas City. And um, things changed. I became a stay-at-home mom and um, found the local quilt shop. Was anxious to get started making another quilt. And I was also doing a lot of stitching. My daughter was young. I did a lot of smocking, hand embroidery, a lot of those kind of things. Made a lot of dresses for her. And then I decided to take a class from one of the local quilt shops. At the time, it was probably one of the only quilt shops. Later, I, a little bit later, I ended up working there part-time. So this was a sampler block of the month, and again, it was done in, you know, those traditional colors, navies, greens, reds, tans, had the house in the center, oops, and then blocks all around it. We learned different techniques, oops, I've got to figure out which way to go here, different techniques for each block. And um, I bordered it, put red binding. And this one, I also hand quilted. I hand quilted the one for my daughter and I hand quilted this one. 
And then at some point I decided I had way too many quilts I wanted to make to hand quilt everything. So one of the next, not the next, but one of the next quilts I made was this one. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. This is a country threads pattern that came out years ago called Spaghetti for a Crowd. And Mary and Connie, who were country threads in the 90s, came to Jacksonville. And I was working at the quilt shop at that time. And this was the class that they taught. Spaghetti for a Crowd. I liked it so much, I actually made a second one. So I have two of those. And that one I quilted on my sewing machine. And I did quite a bit of quilting on my sewing machine for quite a while. In fact, I had a friend whose daughter was getting married. She asked me if I would make a quilt and she would pay me to make the quilt. I don't make quilts for people anymore. <laughs> but she asked me to make a quilt and it was white, white on white, tone on white, tone on tone whites. And it was um, queen size. Was a bridal quilt because her daughter was getting married and I ended up running I was quilting it on my sewing machine I ran the needle of the sewing machine all the way through my finger <laughs> so I've done it all <laughs> I really have <laughs> so anyway um, which by the way little known fact your own spit gets out your own blood so if you ever get blood on a quilt or anything your own spit will get it out so you don't have to pay extra at all for that information so anyway, as my quilt journey continued, I continued to love scrappy quilts and continued to make scrappy quilts. This was another block of the month that I, when I was working at that same store. And this one was called Miniature Magic. They were four inch blocks. And it's really a wall quilt, it's not huge. A lot of these, I mean, I'm not gonna, take big pictures of my grandmother's quilts but some of these I will take will take pictures and insert them so the blocks you had so many you had to make every month and some of the blocks were surrounded by cream colored and okay and go here some of the blocks were surrounded by the dark so when you sewed them all together every other one and it made quite a bit of interest this was really fun. I learned a lot about half square triangles, how to make them. And I ended with a piano key border with all of the different fabrics that I had used in the quilt. This one sat unquilted for a long, long time. And I still have quite a few quilts in a closet that are unquilted. Maybe someday, or maybe I'll sell them and get rid of them I don't know but um, some of them are colors I don't necessarily have in my home anymore um, anyway I long arm quilted this one when it finally got quilted so I've done it all I've done hand quilting I've done quilting on my sewing machine and I've done quilting on my long arm which I purchased in 2006 so I've had it for oh gosh this year I guess it'll be 16 years this summer so anyway um, lots of lots and lots and lots of quilts I've made. Um, scrap ones are still my favorite. This is a log cabin quilt that was um, from the Marty Michelle quilt rulers. It's still one of my very very favorite quilts. I love a log cabin quilt. So that's another one that I've done. This one is kind of fun. This one was a quilt that I made from, uh, my sister and I used to go to the Liberty Gathering in the early 2000s. And um, it was so fun. And it was a quilt, cross stitch. There was all kinds of things. It was a retreat that was put on by the Liberty Quilt Shop and um, the cross stitch shop in Liberty, Missouri. So when I was there, I went around and just collected some of my very favorite fat quarters. They had fat quarters all set out in boxes and I went around and picked my favorite ones. When I got home, I made this quilt. So it's very reminiscent of that trip when I just simply went around and picked my favorite fat quarters and that's all that's in this quilt is just my favorite fat quarters. At the time, they still are my favorite. 
The second quilt shop I worked at here in Jacksonville was more primitive. These are more my colors. I could, I could sew with these colors all day long. Dark, dirty, primitive. That's really what I enjoy the most. Although I sometimes do do lighter quilts, um, lighter colors. Um, this is one I recently finished. This is all made with um, shirtings. Shirtings tend to be small prints, uh, light. We used to call them backgrounds. Nowadays they call them low volume. But quilts that were made, I mean, fabrics that were made to replicate shirtings made in the 1800s. So this whole quilt is just shirtings. And all I did was do a 16 patch and then sash it with cornerstones. I didn't even have a pattern for this one. I've, I've quilted it, the binding's been sewn on, but it hasn't been hand stitched down on the back. I still do hand stitch all of my quilt bindings down, which is why some of them aren't done. <laughs> this is another one. I think I recently showed this on Instagram. This is Scrappy Chevron. The pattern is by Laundry Basket Quilts. And this one has approximately 3, 000, over 3,000 pieces. It is four patches sewn into a bigger four patch and then you alternate the four patches to get the I guess it's called movement in the quilt this one I've quilted but I have not bound it yet I have the binding cut but I just haven't sewn it on that one's fun that's another lighter one that I've done and then in the um let me talk about this one first this is actually from a country sampler line, Jeannie Horton's line of fabric that came out many years ago. I think this was called Worn and Loved was the name of the line. These are square and a square blocks alternating with a um, hourglass block in between. No, it isn't. It's just square and square. It almost forms an hourglass in the middle but they're all square in a square. You've got the light, light square in a square, and then the darker background square in a square. And then you put four them together and sash it. Country Sampler, her fabrics used to be a little bit darker, a little more primitive. I think they're a little more formal now, but still beautiful. But I'm pretty sure this was from the line Worn and Loved by Country Sampler years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Um, I also do a lot of mini quilts. At some point I will do just a video on mini quilts because I've done so many just little mini quilts. We, we love them, we set them on all over. <laughs> I have quilts all over my house. This is just a small representation. We have stacks and stacks and stacks of quilts. That was always my goal, to have stacks of quilts in a cabinet. I guess I've accomplished it. <laughs> in the toy room where the children, grandchildren stay, in fact, my granddaughter, we're gonna have her all weekend, we're so excited. Um, in the toy room, I have a lot of quilts that are um, American Jane fabrics, the American Jane lines by Moda. It's design, the designer's name is Sandy Klopp. And this is one of the ones I have a lot of, my goal is kind of in there to be sort of um, like Dick and Jane, the old readers that we all started, not we all, some of you young folks didn't, but some of us old folks, we learned to read with Dick and Jane. It has the alphabet going all the way around inside the squares. The alphabets were printed. You had fabric you could get and then print. And then it's just a very, very, very scrappy middle. Different blocks. Again, we'll try to picture some of these and insert the pictures. There's like, some of the fabrics look like rulers. Here's one that has little baby chickens, all different types. 
And this is Moda Fabric Sandy Cloth. Love that quilt. Hold on. Another one I've done is um, also by Sandy Klopp, American Jane Fabrics and American Jane Patterns. This one is called Merry-Go-Round. And this one, I keep saying this one, this one. <laughs> okay, every time you hear me say this one, let's have a sip. This one, <laughs> it's called Merry-Go-Round. It's all made with um, two and a half inch strips, jelly rolls. It's not hard at all. I think you did need a special ruler for it. And this, this one is also in the toy room, which is the only place I kind of have those kind of primary colors. And then I also made the mini one with this bright orange polka dot backing. And this is perfect lap size, especially for my six-year-old granddaughter. She loves to cover up with this one. This one. <laughs> These have all been quilted on my long arm. And this particular quilt I made a few years ago, I can't remember the name of it, but you cut five, uh, I can't remember if they were two and a half or three inch squares, and then you sew together in rows, being mindful of what your next row is, so you really need to lay out your pattern as you go, so that you, um, so that you end up making the pluses as you go. And then I put a black that has a black border on it so um so yeah i have quilts everywhere <laughs> the second quilt shop that i worked at that was more primitive we um we did a lot of exchanges uh twice a year we would do exchanges and you would draw somebody's name and then we would celebrate birthdays and christmas and all of that and so um i also was working there with yard girl if you're familiar with her susan aki if you follow her on Instagram, she's very, very popular now. She's written five books. But we worked together for years at that second quilt shop. And oh my goodness, the trouble we could get in. You can't even imagine. <laughs> we would end up pulling fabrics for a quilt. And she would put a pattern with it. And people would come in and say, oh, are you cutting quilt kits for this quilt? And we'd say, oh yeah, what do you, you want one? <laughs> Pretty soon the owner was like, what are y'all doing? We're like, oh, we have 15 people that want kits here. And she's like, great, you know? So anyway, we had a lot of fun. So I'm gonna stop the video right now. I'm gonna pull it just a little bit closer so that you can see some of my current projects and so that you can um, get an idea of, a little bit closer up of some of the things that I've got going. That's your cue. <laughs> my helper. I've kind of delayed this video because he's been so sick. I feel bad. Anyway. Hey, I'm back. We moved the camera a little closer so that you can see a little bit better some of the patterns and the fabrics that I'm working on um, or have in my radar. Just like when I show you, um, if you watch my cross stitch videos, I show you things that might be on my radar, radar or things I have kitted. So. One of the first things, and this is a kit that I got last year from Country Sampler. They may have one very similar, or maybe they still have this. This particular one is called Betsy and Company. It's all flags. I believe Tammy from Basket Nut has started it or has finished, I'm not sure, but I know she's gonna work on it. And these are the fabrics for the kit. Beautiful red, white, and blue. Most of these I think are from Minnick and Simpson Moda. So, and this stripe is will be the sashing for all those flags. So that's something I'm, I bought this last year, but I'm anxious to get to work on that one. Especially as um, May approaches and get closer to um, doing things that are more patriotic. 
The next one I want to show you, this is a current block of the month. You can either buy the kit complete or you can, um, you can get it by the month. I got mine from Fat Quarter Shop. This is Block Bonanza. The fabric in it is um, Joe Morton and it's her new line called Rose. These are all reproduction type fabrics. Nicole of Nicole's Needlework is also doing this and she has some of her blocks finished. I haven't started it yet. Pinks, reds, tans, all kind of vintage, um, muted, what I love fabrics. Let me see if I can find places to put some of these things. Hold on. Um, the next one, and this one I'll pull some of my own fabrics. This is again another country sampler pattern just like that first one. This is called Long May She Wave. It's actually more table runner size. You can make it either 24 by 48 or 36 by 36. So it's a great small wall hanging or maybe um, to fit on a table. Very patriotic. Again, that one I will pull my own fabrics or if I have enough for, um, I doubt I will, but if I had enough left from that other one, I might do that. Um, the next one I want to show you, uh, this was a block of the month at one point in time. I don't know if the pattern's still available or not. Circa 1889 patch. All of those, it's very hard to see, but they're all nine patches. And they finish at two inches in the quilt. And the quilt is, I wanna say it's about eight, it's 71 by 77. So two inches, you're gonna have a lot. It's gonna be like that other quilt that I showed you, the chevron one. And it even came with templates so that you can square up your little four patches. I bought the kit. This is like a tea dyed muslin for the background. And then the way you do this one is that you, there we go with this one again, <laughs> is that you piece, strip piece, your fabrics, you cut small strips and you sew that, instead of cutting individual little pieces and sew them together, you sew the whole strip set together and then you subcut it as you need. And so I have lots and lots of strips cut and even more that I can cut from. So that is going to be fun. I love that kind of quick sewing. It's not triangles. It's just like straight sewing. It doesn't get any better. It's comfort sewing. So that is that one. Um, the next one I've been working on, I have a few blocks finished, not quite half finished with these. This is from a line that came out years ago by Minnick and Simpson. And you, I haven't worked at a quilt stop shop since 2010. So a lot of what I have, I've, you know, you hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm saving for retirement. So I'll have all this to do when I'm retired. Well, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> all the things that I bought and saved for retirement. This particular line, and I know Minnick and Simpson, they designed for Moda. And normally most of their lines anymore are red, white, and blue. But this is an older line called Vintage Reserve. And this is the quilt that I'm making. And I love the way the outer blocks are very tone on tone so that you can't see. And then the center blocks tend to be more um, contrast. So you get that variation. So I think I have maybe half of the blocks finished. And then I have a lot of the um, flying geese to do on that border. So here's some of the blocks. You can see some of them are very dark and dirty, tone on tones. It's mostly tans, browns, 
dark greens, some blacks, some red. See, now this one will be more of a one that'll be in the center. Again, has lighter colors. So I'm anxious to get this one finished. I've kind of been working on this for a while. I think there's 32 blocks all together and I have like 16 of them finished or 36 and I have 18 finished something like that there's a lot of texture in this one so like one of the borders has this star fabric that has a texture so I'm gonna love this when it's done I'm anxious to kind of get back to piecing that and get it finished I love these um, they're called art bin boxes. You can get them at Joann's, different sizes. I always buy them when they're on sale. Another one I'm going to be starting is um, Moda Blockheads. If you're, not for, if you're not familiar with Moda Blockheads, they're starting the fourth... Um, I cut it up my face. <laughs> Maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. Uh, Moda Blockheads 4, they've done one year, they did one, obviously two, and then three. And then I think they put those in a book. And this is Moda Blockheads 4. If you're a quilter, you just sign up for the emails, and each Wednesday they come out with another block. You can do it in two different sizes. Um, let me look real quick. Uh, nine inch finished or four and a half inch finished. And finished means in the quilt. So if when you get the block done, you still have seam allowances, but once it's in the quilt, it's considered finished. So the, the first two blocks have come out and I've decided for that quilt, I have quite a bit of uh, French General that I've collected. I have a lot of fabric that I've collected, if you really want to be honest with me. But anyway, a lot of uh, French General that I've collected some of these beautiful twall fabrics, beautiful red. So that's what I'm gonna be using for my blockheads quilt. And hopefully I can kind of stay um, caught up. I'd like to do both sizes and then, you know, maybe either make two different quilts or somehow put them together with both of them. Um, let's see. There's another project that I wanna do. Um, have you, I hopefully you've watched Susan Stanley and her last name, S-T-A-N-D-L-E-Y. And she does a wonderful floss tube. She talked recently about, or not maybe recently, I binge watched her the other day. So this may not have been a recent one, but anyway, Judy Rothamel. Judy Rothamel really promoted a lot of the um, fabrics that were Civil War reproduction fabrics. Some from prints from, um, actual fabrics that are still in museum quilts and all of that, but some of the exact prints. So she was very instrumental in um, kind of bringing back, along with some other designers, but that whole, uh, you know, that whole reproduction look. So she used to come to one of our local quilt, um, quilt fest every year. And this was a kit that I bought from her this one is called Salute to Our Veterans, and it's really just nine patches, very, very easy. And then there's smaller flags on the top and bottom border and larger flags on the side borders. And the fabric for those was actually included in the kit. So I have the small flags and I have the large flags. So this is really going to be an easy quilt, just nine patch. And then um, I think I may pre-wash some of these. I don't technically starch. I know a lot of people starch. I will use spray starch, but I'm not one to use a lot of, you know, starch and then hang and dry and all of that. I, I don't tend to do that. But these are the fabrics that were in that kit. So a lot of those 
just classic reproduction kit. Well, fabrics. So that's one I want to do. This is a quilt that I've had kitted up, one of those kit lists for retirement. Um, there's a company that used to be called Bonnie Blue, but now is Red Crinoline. They changed the name of the um, company. This one is called Plantation Road. And again, the piecing will be really easy because it's nine patches and then set on point. So this one really is all about the fabric. I have this piece that will be my setting. And then this one, this one's my setting. This one's my, oh, which one is this? I think this is the outer border. Yeah, outer border. And then this one is all done in blues and pinks. But again, those vintage um, reproduction fabrics. Tans, pinks, browns, and blues. And then this will be my setting, and this will be my outer border. So it'll be beautiful when it's done. So it's just a matter of getting some of these cut out. Sometimes the worst part of making a quilt for me is taking the fabrics and pressing the fat quarters or whatever before you cut. Because, you know, if they've been stacked up for a while, they have to be, they have to be pressed before you can um, go very far on them. Um, let's see. I think this is the next one that I want to show you. So for those of you who do watch Susan Stanley, she has a quilt in the background of her um, videos. Looks like this. Again, it's by Judy Rothmull. It's called the Ohio Star Medallion. All the smar sm small stars are the Ohio stars. And then the center one really has uh, a couple of different names. Uh, some people call it Star of David. Some people call it Bethlehem Star. But this here. So again, when Judy Rothmull came to Jacksonville, I bought the kit. So I have everything kitted to make that quilt. Unfortunately, that main star, what I need to do is start piecing the smaller stars around that big one because that middle one needs to be hand pieced because the points on all of those are teeny tiny, teeny tiny. So at some point I will make that, but maybe a while. <laughs> That'll be an ongoing project. And the last one, no, two more I wanna share with you. And we'll see how much progress I make by the time I do my next quilt video. Looks like a lot <laughs> to do. The next one I have in this cute little mailbox, or mailbox, lunchbox. This is a um, pattern that was published by um, Heartspun Quilts. Pam Buddha is the designer. It's called Needle and Thread. And this one I got a layer cake. Again, those same. I just think these colors are so homey and so wonderful. And this is my outer border. And this is my sashing. So it's pretty much as the picture. The fabric is all by Pam Buddha. And she, I'm not sure to see, who does she design? She designs for Marcus Brothers fabrics. So needle and thread is the name of the pattern. Let's see, what's the name of the line of fabric? Hold on. The line is called Prairie Dry Goods. So if you want to look into getting the fabrics, they're Prairie Dry, dry Goods. I think they came out maybe last summer or last year. So that was another thing I've got on my radar. And the last, but certainly not least, let me look around here, make sure I've talked about all of these. I think I have. Last but not least, I have started and jumped into the journey 
of making a Dear Jane quilt. This is the Dear Jane quilt. This was originally made in 1868 by someone called Jane Stickle. It resides in the Vermont Museum, the Bennington Museum. Occasionally they bring it out for display. The person that made this book drafted all the patterns by looking at the antique quilt. And as she was drafting the individual patterns, the blocks are five inch finished, I believe, she wrote letters to Jane. Jane was dead, but about the journey of drafting these blocks. Now, a lot of people have done this in many different, more modern colorways. But again, because I love that reproduction fabric time period of uh, kind of dark and dirty and the more vintage and um, muted colors. So that's what, now what did I do with my blocks that I had finished? There. I have stuff all around me, so hope nobody comes to the door. <laughs> so there's different ways to do this. There's been a lot of um, people that have, you know, done paper piecing instructions, a lot of different instructions. I'm doing it through what used to be a club called the Dear Jane Club. And one of the first things they do to tell you is to cut your background strips and label them. So this is part of a background strip that I did, 7 8 inch because once you've cut this and you have half inch, seven eighths, five eighths, three fourths, it's hard to, you know, you don't want to have to remeasure. So if you label it, then you can cut off what you need as you progress. I bought a bolt of um, Bella Solids porcelain. I didn't want white, white. I don't generally use white, white in any of my, it just wouldn't go in my house. Um, but here's some of the blocks that I have finished. I'm behind but I'm not pressuring myself. This is the kind of thing, once I start doing it, it's like you can't stop, so you gotta do at least, you know, six or eight of them. And the instructions I have start with easy rotary cutting, rather than going straight through the quilt. You know, some people, when they make this, calculated stitcher um, on floss tube, her and her mom are making this. But some people like to go and they go straight through the rows and then they do so many of the big triangles on the corners. I'm not doing that. I'm doing by difficulty. And the reason I decided to do that is because I knew that if I went by difficulty, I would get a lot of the easy ones under my belt. And once I had a lot of the easy ones under my belt, I felt like I could um, motivate myself to really keep going at it. So here's some more of the blocks. I think I have like 14 of them finished. Not near enough. I am keeping a log with a scrap of each fabric that I'm using. I'd like to not repeat fabrics, but we'll see. This one I had to make two because the first one was an oops. So I'll probably make a pin cushion out of it. They're very muted. There's some yellows some greens, some blues, some reds, some pinks, but primarily uh, a lot of tans and browns, reddish browns, chocolate browns. So these were all the easy rotary. This is the oops one that I'll make into a pin cushion. There were some that you had to cut seven eighths and some were like three fourths. So I used the wrong strip, <laughs> easy to do. So anyway, that's my dear Jane journey. And um, I haven't had a lot of time to piece lately. I'm still doing uh, a lot of quilts for customers, so that keeps me busy. And um, I was sick for a while. My husband was very, very sick. He's much better now. Are you better, dear? I'm better now. He's better now. He was so sick that I couldn't even bother him to start a quilt video because he does all the tech. I, he was like out of it. Yeah, I don't know what he had. Maybe just pneumonia or the flu, I don't know. But he was really sick. But he's much better. And so, um, I will be back, for those of you who also watch my cross stitch, I'll be back next week and next weekend sometime for another cross stitch video. I hope you've enjoyed my first quilt video. 
I've certainly enjoyed um, showing you some of the things. At some point, I'm going to show you applique, and some point I will show you, you know, all my red, white, and blue quilts, or red and white quilts, or blue and white quilts. Uh, they're all over the house, so I might as well share what they look like. At some point, too, I have some quilts that I might want to get rid of and sell. So um, hang on. I might, I might give away some. I might sell some. We'll just see. So I hope you're all having a good day, and I will be back sometime. Hopefully, too, I might add some tutorials to these so that um, anybody that doesn't quilt and kind of wants to get into it, anybody can quilt. You don't have to have a sewing machine. You can quilt with a scissors and a ruler and a pencil and a needle and thread and you can quilt. <laughs> That's how they did it back in the day. So don't stress yourself out if you wanna make a quilt and you don't have all the modern tools. It makes it easier with modern tools, I will admit that. And somebody said, oh, I wanna make a quilt like they did in the 1800s by hand. And then someone else, a gal that used to own one of the quilt shops I worked at, she goes, trust me, if people in the 1800s had had sewing machines, they would have used sewing machines. <laughs> Their life was quite busy. So anyway, I'll let you go. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Love you. Bye. I'm done, dear. <laughs>